Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL team preview, taking a look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to break down their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams to see what we can expect from the Steelers this upcoming season. Ben Roethlisberger was having a banner season last year before the injuries hindered him in the latter part of the season. Roethlisberger threw for over 3,200 yards, 26 touchdowns, and only eight interceptions. He also completed 63% of his passes, and as much as they butted heads in the preseason last year, Big Ben and new offensive coordinator Todd Haley actually worked well with each other last season as the offense was moving the ball. People never mention Roethlisberger as one of the game's elite, but he is exactly what you want in a quarterback and what I would classify as elite. He's tough, he's a winner, he's athletic, and he has ice water in his veins. Now there's a switch at the backup position with Bruce Gretkowski and rookie Landry Jones out of Oklahoma replacing the dependable and reliable veterans Charlie Batch and Byron Left, which would be interesting to see who wins that backup job this offseason. On from the Steelers backfield is Rashard Mendenhall who signed with the Arizona Cardinals in the offseason and I know he was often injured but when he was healthy he made them better and gone with him is that explosive element from this running back core. Now the, in my opinion the Steelers have three of the same type of backs battling it out for the starting spot this year. Last year's leading rusher Jonathan Dwyer returns who rushed for over 600 yards last year and second leading rusher Isaac Redman who chipped in with over 400. In the draft they added big back Le'Veon Bell from Michigan State. Now Bell isn't just a three downs and a cloud of dust type of player. He does have surprisingly quick feet for a guy that's 6'2", 245 pounds. And one of these three guys will be the main ball carrier in that offense and I think Le'Veon Bell gives them a little bit more vision and agility than the others. Two other backs that could factor into the mix will be Baron Batch and free agent signing from the Cardinals, LaRod Stevens Howling, both of which are excellent receivers out of the backfield. A dark horse candidate to make a, the roster and be a key contributor will be Curtis McNeil, the running back out of USC, despite his size, is a tough inside runner with great acceleration. The receiving core of the Pittsburgh Steelers may not be flashy or sexy with names, but I do believe this unit can and will be effective this season. Gone is Mike Wallace, who was the Steelers' deep threat and had a lot of speed, but they were able to bring back Emmanuel Sanders, who started to emerge last year as a viable threat. They also have Antonio Brown, who is more likely to play the role of the quote-unquote possession guy in his offense. Brown is the most consistent of the group, but they want him to continue to elevate his game to the point where he begins to draw coverage away from the other options. 2013 rookie Marcus Wheaton was one of the top wideouts in college football last season. Wheaton is a guy that has good acceleration and is an excellent route runner. He's a combination of both Brown and Sanders, so I think it's addition by subtraction with this receiving core. They lose Mike Wallace, but they gain a guy that's talented in Marcus Wheaton. Big body vets Jericho Cotri and Plexico Burris also give this unit guys that are steady across the middle and consistent, but also are dangerous in the red zone. At the tight end position, the Steelers have a formidable trio of guys led by Heath Miller, who I feel as though is one of the best tight ends in the league. Miller is a quiet superstar that met the team in receptions with 71 and in receiving yards with 816. Behind Miller, David Paulson, who's another very solid receiver, as well as Matt Spate, who's an excellent blocker. So health permitting, this will be a very solid group of receivers that will be much more productive than people expect them to be. The Steelers offensive line has potential to be one of their better ones in recent years. They're led up front by arguably the best center in the game in Marquise Pouncey. Pouncey is entering his fourth season and has been a pro bowler every year in the league. On the interior, last year's first round pick David DeCastro was injured most of the season but was able to see time in the latter part of late last season. And coming out of Stanford, DeCastro was the best guard prospect in the country. Ramon Foster is starting at left guard and he's solid in the running game and two young guys are listed as the bookends. On the left side you have Mike Adams who struggled early in the preseason and in the regular season but was able to get better week in week out and played some good football toward the end of last year. Opposite of him is Marcus Gilbert who's coming off an injury but he's a guy that's versatile enough to play both tackle spots. The depth is a concern for the Steelers, but they do have versatile backups in Calvin Beecham and also John Malecki. Both are guards that can play tackle in the pinch, so they got that versatility that they want at that position. And there's a couple of undrafted free agents that could make the roster. Mike Golick, who can play both guard spots, and Joe Madsen, who is an excellent center in college at West Virginia.
This is one position where the youth movement is starting its transition. Gone is Casey Hampton, a longtime nose tackle, and enter Steve McClendon, who's a 6'4", 280-pound defensive tackle that's not as big as Hampton, but he's very quick and will provide more of an interior pass rush than Hampton was able to provide. Amita Tiamau provides depth at the nose tackle spot. They really need him to step up his game as well. And Ziggy Hood is slated to start at the defensive end position, which is the five technique and at 3-4 defense, but he hasn't been an impact player. They really need him to take his game to the next level or they're going to have to go with 2011 first-round pick Cameron Hayward, who's currently backing up Brett Kiesel. Both Kiesel and Hayward are very strong at the point of attack and they anchor down in a running game. Kiesel is entering his 12th season and the Steelers are grooming Hayward to take over his spot. Rookie Nick Williams out of Sanford could also figure into the mix. Keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Cordian Hagens from the University of Louisiana, Region Cajuns, as a dark horse candidate to win the backup job behind Hood. At 6'5", 280 pounds, seen a lot of Hagens' game. And he's a guy that has a good first step off the line of scrimmage and can't get pressure on a QB. The Steelers have always had a wealth of talent at the linebacker position. Starting in the inside spot, you have to like what you see from both Larry Foote and Lawrence Timmons. Foote is entering his 12th season and has finished last year second on the team in tackles with 114. Timmons is a budding superstar in my opinion. A 6'1", 234-pound, seven-year vet out of Florida State is a dynamic playmaker in both aspects of defense. That's the running game as well as the passing game. He led the team in tackles with 134 and had three interceptions, which also led the team. The question is the depth behind these guys. The plan was for Sean Spence to be that guy, but he's recovering from a career-threatening knee injury and may not even be ready for the start of the season. That's why six-round pick Vince Williams out of Florida State will have an excellent opportunity to see the field this year as a rookie. On the outside, gone is longtime stealer James Harrison, but I still like what I see with Lamar Whitley and Jason Worlds. Whitley is looking to bounce back from last year's campaign, and he excels in getting to the quarterback, one of the best pass rushers from that linebacking position. And Jason Worlds is a talented player, but he has to hold off 2013 first-round pick Jarvis Jones out of Georgia. And yet another example of how the rich get richer Jones was the best defensive player in the country, in my opinion, last season. Steelers got themselves a steal in Jarvis Jones where they selected him in the first round. And keep an eye on third-year player Chris Carter out of Fresno State once again will provide depth on the outside. I believe the next position that will undergo a youth movement for the Pittsburgh Steelers will be the secondary. It just won't be this season as they have key vets in I. Taylor who's been one of the more consistent players in the league. They have safeties, Ryan Clark and Troy Palomalu. And there's a significant difference in the Steelers' defense when either one of these guys are out of the lineup, especially Palomalu. Now, the Steelers are preparing themselves and are counting on a lot of youth to step up and contribute this season. At cornerback, opposite of Taylor will be Cortez Allen, whose play last year made it easier for the Steelers to not re-sign Keenan Lewis, who went to New Orleans. Allen has better ball skills than Lewis, and he should do fine in that position. The big battle will take place for the nickel spot between Curtis Brown and William Gay. I think a dark horse candidate will be fifth round pick Terry Hawthorne out of Illinois. When I went down to the East West Shrine game, I watched him thoroughly all week long. He stood out as a top player with the versatility to play on the inside as well as on the boundary. At the safety position, expect to see a lot of fourth round draft pick rookie Shamarco Thomas out of Syracuse, who's a cross between both Clark and Palomalu. He can actually play both safety spots because of his physicality and his coverage ability. And if these young guys step up and raise their game this season, you'll see a lot of movement back here in 2014. In the special teams department, the Steelers have a very good kicker in Sean Sweesom, who finally found his groove with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this is a guy that is very clutch and has ice water in his veins. Hunting last year was a bit of a question. They had a rookie in Drew Butler out of Georgia, one of the best punters in the country, but he struggled last year and they're hoping he can have a better season, but they protected themselves by bringing in Brian Mormon, who's a very consistent kicker, 12-year vet out of Pittsburgh State. The kickoff return duties will be held by LaRod Stevens Howling, who's one of the best kickoff returners in the game, which is why they bought him over from Arizona. Punt returner, my guess would be Terry Hawthorne, a guy that did a lot of that at Illinois and does a great job of it. I think he has a good chance of winning that duty, or you can see LaRai Stevens howling back there as well.
let's take a look at what the Steelers have on the roster. Number one, a great coaching staff. Anytime you have Mike Tomlin as your head coach, a guy that coaches the way you want to coach. You want him to coach aggressive, but he also understands personnel and have a great defensive coordinator, one of the best in history in Dick LeBeau. So they're fine right there. Number two, a Super Bowl winning quarterback that doesn't get a lot of credit in Ben Roethlisberger. And third, the Steelers have a wealth of defensive playmakers. That's the real reason why this defense will always be competitive. Now, on the flip side, what they lack, they don't have that game breaker at the running back position. I know they drafted Le'Veon Bell, but in my opinion, he's a guy that they already have on the roster. They don't have stability on that defensive line. A lot of questions going into the 2013 season, and depth at the inside linebacker is also a question. Those are the three things that I think the Steelers lack coming into 2013. Reason for optimism for the Pittsburgh Steelers, number one, we mentioned it before when we talked about what they have, a great coaching staff. And they also have a very good quarterback in Ben Roethlisberger, but this was a team that wasn't that far off. They were in the playoff hunt until Roethlisberger got injured, got nicked, tried to fight through it, play tailed off in the latter part of the season, and they missed the playoffs. And defensively, they're going to be a lot better. So there's always optimism in Pittsburgh. The cause for concern would be if the running game doesn't take pressure off of the passing game. If they become too pass happy, then that's a problem for Pittsburgh. When they're balanced, they're very dangerous. And on defense, if they can't find that help that they need at the second and third cornerback spots, all teams are going to do is spread this team out and attack them vertically down the field. The road to the Super Bowl for the Steelers goes as follows. Number one, the running game becomes competent. Remember, if this team is balanced, they're dangerous. Two, the offensive line has to stay healthy for all 16 games because they don't have a lot of depth behind those guys. And third, the young guys have to step up on defense and be key contributors in order for Pittsburgh to find themselves in East Rutherford in February. the Steelers finishing third in the AFC North in a division that's going to be very tightly contested all season long. The questions I have about Pittsburgh, again, the running game, depth in the secondary, can they overcome that? Can they find a difference maker on the defensive line as well? They're dependent on a lot of young guys, and right now I think both Baltimore and Cincinnati are a little bit better and have less question marks going into the season than Pittsburgh, so that's why I have them finishing third. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Steeler Fan Forms for always showing football game plan support.